For hundreds of years, the Angkor Wat was abandoned in a dense forest, a jungle. The scale of the ancient remains of Angkor Wat are 500 times larger than the pyramids. It is more difficult to construct the remains of Angkor Wat than to construct Los Angeles of the United States again. The Khmer Empire, known for its remarkable architectural achievements and extensive territorial reach, has been further illuminated by modern LiDAR technology. This advanced tool has allowed archaeologists to peer beneath the dense jungle canopy, uncovering hidden aspects of this ancient civilization. And that is the center of the Khmer Empire, right there. That's the area that we're going to be uh, looking at. Two significant sites, Angkor and Mahendra Parvata, have been the focus of extensive LIDAR surveys, revealing a wealth of previously unknown details about the empire's urban planning, water management, and agricultural practices. The Khmer Empire, particularly its epicenter at Angkor, has long been renowned for its architectural grandeur and sophisticated infrastructure. The advent of LiDAR technology has provided unprecedented insights into the scale and complexity of Angkor's urban sprawl, water management systems, and extensive road networks. These discoveries have significantly expanded our understanding of this ancient civilization, uncovering a host of new details about its construction methods, architectural styles, and the logistical prowess required to build such an expansive empire. The prehistory of this place, is, uh, at least of Cambodia, is not well known. Between 2012 and 2015, a series of LIDAR surveys revealed the true extent of Angkor's urban sprawl. These surveys covered over 1,000 square kilometers, extending far beyond the well-known temple complexes of Angkor Wat and Angkor Thom. The detailed scans unveiled a densely populated urban environment with a highly organized grid-like pattern, showcasing the empire's sophisticated urban planning. The scans uncovered thousands of previously unknown residential areas, each consisting of houses, courtyards, and urban blocks. These residential zones were systematically arranged, reflecting a high degree of planning and social organization. Each household likely included wooden structures built on stilts, which have since decayed, leaving only the foundations visible through LIDAR. These homes were complemented by communal spaces and agricultural plots, indicating a well-balanced urban lifestyle. Angkor was revealed to be a hydraulic city, featuring an intricate network of canals, reservoirs known as berets and moats. These systems were crucial for irrigation, flood control, and sustaining the urban population. The network of water management structures showcased the Khmer Empire's engineering expertise with meticulously designed channels ensuring efficient water distribution and management. Archaeologists don't know the truth of Earth history. It is just that they are keep on making noise. The West Beret, one of the largest man-made reservoirs in the world, measures approximately 8 kilometers long and about 2 kilometers wide, with a capacity of around 50 million cubic meters. It played a pivotal role in Angkor's water management system. The East Beret, slightly smaller but equally impressive, was similarly designed to manage water resources efficiently. These berets not only served practical purposes, but also held significant religious and symbolic meanings. The construction of these waterworks involved elaborate spillways, dikes, and water channels. The spillways were engineered to manage water flow during the rainy season, preventing floods and ensuring a stable water supply year-round. The dikes and channels were constructed using massive sandstone blocks, each weighing several tons. These blocks were quarried from the Kulin Mountains, approximately 40 kilometers away, and transported to Angkor through a combination of riverine and overland routes. LIDAR technology has also revealed a network of ancient highways radiating from Angkor, connecting it to other major centers within the Khmer Empire. These roads were meticulously planned and constructed, reflecting the empire's emphasis on connectivity and control. Lined with rest stops and administrative outposts, these highways facilitated travel and communication across the empire. Some outposts included large structures, possibly serving as storage or garrison facilities, indicating their importance in maintaining the empire's cohesion. The discovery of raised causeways highlighted the advanced construction techniques employed by Khmer builders. These causeways, often several kilometers long, were elevated to remain functional during the monsoon season, 
LiDAR scans also uncovered numerous previously unknown temples and structures, some buried under centuries of vegetation. This area became Indianized at this point. Indian patriots claimed that this was actually Greater India. These discoveries included both small shrines and large temple complexes, enhancing the already rich religious landscape of Angkor. Among the newly discovered structures were small shrines with intricate carvings and large temples with multiple sanctuaries, reflecting the diverse architectural styles and religious practices of the Khmer Empire. Detailed mapping of remote temple sites like Bante Chama revealed intricate bas-reliefs and hidden chambers. Located in northwest Cambodia, Bante Chama is one of the largest temple complexes outside Angkor. The base reliefs at Bante Chma depict scenes of battles, religious rituals and daily life. The temple complex also features large enclosures and moats, indicative of its significance and scale. The types and sizes of structures discovered through LIDAR are varied and impressive. Angkor Wat, the largest religious monument in the world, covers an area of 401 acres. Constructed primarily from sandstone blocks, some weighing up to one and a half tons, Angkor Wat is renowned for its grandeur and intricate bas-reliefs. Bayan Temple, known for its enigmatic smiling faces, features 54 towers adorned with 216 stone faces. The temple's complex structure includes numerous galleries and chambers constructed using massive stone blocks. Taprom, famous for the intertwining roots of large trees enveloping the temple ruins, exemplifies the blend of nature and architecture. This temple complex is extensive, with multiple courtyards and corridors, creating a sense of discovery and enchantment. The LIDAR scans also revealed the layout of residential and administrative buildings. Although the wooden structures have decayed, their stone foundations show the layout of residential areas. These houses were built on stilts to protect against flooding and pests. Along the highways, several large buildings likely served as administrative centers. Constructed with laterite and sandstone, these buildings featured multiple rooms and storage areas, highlighting their multifunctional use. Stone blocks used in these constructions were primarily sourced from the Kulin Mountains. Sandstone blocks, the primary material for temple construction, were transported to Angkor using a combination of river and land routes. Some of these blocks weighed as much as one and a half tons. Laterite blocks, used primarily for foundation work and less visible structures, were sourced locally. Their porous nature made them easier to work with, though they were less durable than sandstone. In 2012, archaeologists using LiDAR technology rediscovered Mahendra Parvata, one of the first major capitals of the Khmer Empire. This city, situated on Phnom Kulin Mountain, predates the famous Angkor Wat and offers a glimpse into the formative years of Khmer urban development. The LiDAR scans covered the dense jungle canopy, uncovering the hidden city and providing a comprehensive map of its layout. The city featured a grid pattern with clearly defined residential areas, public buildings, temples and roads. The scans uncovered thousands of structures, including residential homes, administrative buildings and religious complexes, illustrating the complexity and sophistication of the city's planning. Numerous temples, many dating back to the early 9th century, were discovered beneath thick jungle foliage. These temples provided valuable insights into the religious practices and architectural styles of the early Khmer Empire. Among the notable discoveries were Prasat O Paong and Prasat Damre Crab, which featured unique carvings and architectural elements, showcasing the artistic and religious fervor of the period. The discovery of causeways and bridges demonstrated the advanced engineering capabilities of the Khmer builders. These structures allowed for efficient transportation across challenging terrains, including rivers and valleys. The causeways were often elevated and lined with laterite and sandstone blocks, ensuring their stability and longevity even during the rainy season. The LiDAR scans revealed large-scale agricultural terraces on the slopes of Phnom Kulin Mountain. These terraces were used for rice cultivation and other crops, demonstrating sophisticated agricultural techniques that supported a large population. The terraces were meticulously constructed to manage water flow and prevent soil erosion, indicating a deep understanding of agronomy and environmental management. The presence of reservoirs and channels indicated a complex water management system designed to irrigate the terraced fields and manage seasonal water flow. These systems were essential for sustaining agriculture in the mountainous terrain. 
The reservoirs, known as berets, were strategically placed to collect and distribute water, ensuring a stable supply throughout the year.